Hi everybody. Thank you so much for joining in. I'm Donna from Riverside Beads here. Um, so we're going to do flat colour hemo today. This is one of the projects in our bead box, so the latest bead box. So just for those of you that are tuning in that don't know about our bead box, um, Riverside Bead Box is something that's been in the making for many years and, and it's been a positive of lockdown for us really. It's a chance for us to bring you, when you come on a class with us, rather than just one kit that does a specific thing, we'll have ideas and extra inspiration and different things that um, we, we do in the classes. And this is a chance for us to bring you that little bit more than just a kit. So it's a kit plus some. So this month's box is Flatka Mahimo and it's Flatka Mahimo in two structures two braid structures the one I'm going to show today and the uh, chevron style one as well so they were the two braid structures we went to there's lots there's a whole world out there in flat kamahimo same way as there is in your round kamahimo designs and then we created some beaded variations so it's something I keep when I've taught it before I've always said oh we need to experiment with beads and uh, one of our team gainer who's my mum uh, was uh, really mastered this technique herself and uh, created she sort of once you once you do kamahimo you'll see when i get started with it it's where the braids go where the cord passes how how you could add beads and so she had a good play about and we've ended up with three beaded variations as well they may or may not be for you but you've got them and you'll get full step-by-step -step instructions with lots of that extra we're trying to give you what you get from us when you come on a class so this is great so you get your five braid structures for your flat kamahimo and then you're also going to get, um, with this box, we get a, hopefully I've got the sample, oh, I have, I just, just didn't ever had it with me. Um, you will get a, a, it could be a Kamahimo weight, or you could have it as a sort of exclusive little um, angel bag charm. So we have made it as a bag charm, so sorry the light's really terrible actually here, I've got this ready to do the next bit. Um, so there's our little angel bag charm as well, but that's a really good Kamahimo weight. So it's got a bit of weight to it, a nice big chunky bead there, one of our exclusive little um, Sparkles Facer Angels, and then the little clip. So you could put that onto your Kamahimo if you feel you need it. I don't think we actually did with a lot of these ones, um, but it's there, it's an option for you. So you're also going to get that as well included in there. And then um, you you also, we always try and give you extras. So you, in this one, you get a very hand, we should look in the box, that's how we should do it in a moment. You get a very handy little bead gauge and you get um, five free strands of beads as well. So we always do it with free postage. So the price you pay is including the postage to your door in the UK. And um, yes, yeah, so that's Riverside Bead Box. Now let me bring you on to my mat because I'm trying to work on my packaging. So we're creating our little box for this. Um, so let me just bring the mat view on. Oh, come on. Let me just bring this one on and hopefully you can, you can see my mat now. Well, not my mat, I've got the box. So I'm having a play with the packaging. I don't know what you think of, of this. So we're trying to have a, so we'll have some sort of packaging on the box so you know you're getting your little treat and you're getting your box through the door. So it's the Riverside Bead Box and then, yeah, so we'll have a play with this. So, uh, this is just a mock-up prototype, what do you think? Um, so yeah, let's see, let's see about that, where we go with it. So let me just check your messages quickly. Yeah, I can, I, I can see some of them. It's not letting me see your old messages like it normally does with uh, with this. Oh, it's a strange old system, technology. I moan every week, don't I? <laughs> Hopefully you got the picture come through now. Wonderful. Okay, so yeah, this is this is your bead box. So at the moment, it's a, it's a plain box, but what's inside it far outweighs the pretty packaging. But yes, look out for some pretty packaging coming in the near future when I can decide what I want to do. Anyone that's a designer out there, do let me know because uh, <laughs> we need to have a good old play around with this. Anyway, let's have a look inside. So I've already done a bit of a box reveal on this a couple of weeks ago, but it's been a really popular box, and I thought we'd um, have one more chance, and I'll show you one of the braid structures on here. Now, when you're 
a member, you get access to an exclusive Facebook group as well. So um, do remember to come into the group. I'll check who's a member and who's subscribed to the uh, to the box first, and then we let you into the Riverside Bead Box group. And I do a full tutorial there. So it's actually an interactive hour or so where we really go through some of the details of exactly what you've got in your box as well. So that's a little exclusive group that we've got for members. So your box will always have um, how to get hold of us, which will help, um, and a business card for you to keep hold of. It will have any necessary tools. The only thing I would say about tools is it won't have, if you need pliers, it's going to assume you've got pliers and it's going to assume you've got a bead box. Although our bead box one did have a bead, uh, sorry, a bead mat that did have a bead mat in for you. But other than that, if we do Kamahimo like this, it will have a tool. It will have your tool that you need for that. You may have a Kamahimo board already, um, but a lot of people have actually got the round one rather than the flat one. So we thought we'd, we'd definitely do flat. It's a, a nice variation. You will also get full step-by-step -step instructions. So this one has got the um, instructions for all the different braids that you're going to need. So <laughs> you needed a lot for this one. You needed two full sets of instructions, which was this one here. Um, and because we have to do all each of the steps, then you needed your one for your chevron, then you needed all your beaded ones. Plus then we give you getting to know your materials, tips and techniques, and then anything else we've given you, any instructions. So this one's got your little black dress instructions in it, how to make the angel, how to turn it into your exclusive bag charm as well. So this is this month's box. Just to throw it out there to you, February is obviously a shorter month, so I can't believe this, but um, Riverside Bead Box 5 is ready to go on next week. So I can't I can't believe how quickly it's come. I don't feel like I've managed to quite show this to you all the time. So I thought this is the week to do you an extra an extra session on it. Um, so thank you to everybody that's supporting us. We've obviously got a date now for our shop opening. It's seven weeks away still. Um, I completely agree with why, you know, everything that's happening with it. Um, it just seems so long till we can see you. So we're here online for you in the meantime. Um, uh, but we will carry on doing these as well after, um, even when our shop's open. So we'll go back to being six days a week. Um, and we're there for you if you want to come visit when it's safe and we're, we're allowed to do so. So you'd always get your free gift with different beads in. Sometimes they'll be appropriate to the project, but with this one, you've just got a nice assortment of different beads to, to include in there. Um, so that's that. Going forward with it, it may be a limited number of the free gifts, but at the moment, they're, they're all we're being able to put them in all of the boxes, but we, we need to work that one out. And then the other thing this did is work with different sizes of cords. So look how gorgeous these all look. 2mm satin, 1mm satin and suede as well. So you've got three different types of cord and all of these are then used, so that's another variation, you can do the suede in your project too. So you get all of these all beautifully uh, bundled up ready for you. What you also get is some beads because that when we decided that the beaded ones were super cute we thought we'd go for something that was generic across them. You can of course use beads from your stash and some charms as well and these are just gorgeous. You'll probably see some of the photos I've been sharing recently. You just add one off of the, the clasp really or just save them for another project but I think they look ever so cute so you can just add one or two off of each of your projects. But, uh, so that's those and then you need your end caps as well now these are ribbon cord ends that we use on these they've got little teeth that sort of bite hold of it when you flatten them with pliers um, and then you've got all your clasps and everything and then of course your little angel I was talking about I think that's everything in that I think this box was a, a complete one so that is the um, the technique that's that you've got here so it's flat kamahimo so i wanted to show you how to do the flat kamahimo i'm not going to do it with beads on but if you're a member of the bead box you will be able to um head over to the bead box group and watch back the full tutorial i did there's aspects of it you're struggling with hopefully i covered it in a bit more detail over in that group but uh, i thought it'd be nice to show one of the braids particularly um on here so let's get started and bring in my work in working one okay let's make sure i've got the right one i'll just grab hold of them i'll just show you quickly some of the uh can you see that okay in the picky i just need a, a little light on as well with them. there we 
junkie. All right. So this is uh, this is the um, one of the original ones, I guess, that I did. Um, this one is your ten braid one, and then the other one, the other braid that we do, the chevron style one, is. Let me get it right. That's the one. So that one's the eight braid one. So the, you can see they work. They do work differently. It's a different braid structure. Flat comb hemo is great for that. There's lots of different braid structures that you can can use um, and do. So and then we thought we won't complicate it too much. We'll give you two nice ones to work through. That's a great selection of projects. And I love what people have been sharing in the in the main Riverside Beads group. So feel free to share any of your designs. But I, I haven't got round to commenting. I'm sorry. I've been super busy this week working on our new website. But I do, they ping up and I just need to reply to you all. So um, there was a gorgeous one. I don't know if you're on here today. Um, done out of wire. It looked amazing. So well done. But I believe it was one of these techniques, one of the structures that we're showing you in the box. And then you can take it to a whole new level that you, you want to do. So let's bring in some of the finished ones. Let me bring in the one we're doing now. Let me bring in that braid structure. And just then I'll show you how you see the difference in them. Just give me a moment. That's that one. That's one of them. Uh, no, chevron. Uh, obviously, some of these will be beaded, so bear with me as I bring them in. But these are all done on this ten braid one. There is a little bit there. That one's chevron and that one's chevron. So that's some of the ones there. So two, two of them. I don't know if you can quite see the beads actually. <laughs> Oh, I didn't. There you go, that captured them. So they're actually down the middle, I suppose, with them being silver. They, you, they do see much more than it looks like it's showing on camera, actually. So um, they're those two, and they've both been done in the one millimetre. Of course, you get the one millimetre and the two millimetre. Let me see if I've got two mil example. I have, but it's a chevron. So just to give you an idea, that shows um, a little bit thicker. It comes out a little bit thicker. But the different braid structures come out as different sizes as well. Oh, I don't think we did a two mil, no. And then, the, of course, the other one you've got is your suede, but these are both the chevron pattern. By chevron, if you look, you've got very defined arrows as such in the different... But you can do you can do them in both of the designs, but that's the chevron one. So I seem to have more chevron samples today to show you. There. But I've been sharing lots of pictures over the last... Well, I suppose it's been out about three weeks now. But it um, seems to have flown by. Keeping us out of trouble in lockdown, hey? Nice to have some positive news, isn't it, guys? To a, a road map of some variation out of this. And I can't wait to see you in the shop and just give it a little bit of life. Those are gorgeous together. How do you keep the sides straight? Yes, Claire. I definitely feel that is something that I had trouble with. Let me go closer because I don't want you to think that these are perfect because that's definitely something that is an issue. They're not. Let me get that there. So they are slightly wobbly. But what, it's, what impacts on that is it's how... You've got to use the same tension and the same... As you braid, you've, you've got to be braiding in the same... Hold on, I'm trying to find the right words to describe it. So whatever I do on, imagine your board is in half. Whatever I do on this left-hand side, if I use a different tension or a different way of doing it on the right-hand side, you will find that it comes out slightly wonky. There's another thing where you'll see when I start to braid, it will start to ride up there um, onto the board. You kind of have to let it a little bit and always when you're pulling down, pull down straight so underneath to keep the braid pull down straight okay as opposed to pull into one side so if you pull to one side that will definitely affect the sides um so and if you feel you need to hold it all the time do your best to hold it straight down okay um that definitely impacts on it because if you pull it slightly if, you, if you're pulling slightly more of one side in or you using slightly more of the cord on one side, that's when I find that it affects it. So really think about that. Definitely when I've taught this, I've found that when people can master pulling it straight down to give it the tension, and that's where people love to use a weight because it will naturally help keep some weight and tension. If you don't fancy using your beaded one or you still find you would like something with a little bit more um, weight to it, we do sell a 90 gram um, proper Kamahimo weight, which is a big solid 
piece of metal that uh, that some people find useful i quite like a pretty one but um if you do find that is an issue work on your tension uh, that's definitely definitely something that i think need, people need to to work on so shall we have a look at the braid structure and um have a go at one of the braids so i think come back to the beginning what i tend to do with this one is do a full repetition round i mean you can't always help it if you need to put it down and go and answer the phone it's it's not as versatile as a, a round braid which i i love there's stop points you can you can call on um with that one but with this not as much so um i'm slightly what i'm doing i wonder if i can get my hand around the angle i'm holding it down there so i've got that i've got the tail which is you will start it with this down there in between my fingers so it's getting a little bit of tension but i'm conscious like i say to pull it down really keep it nice and straight and in the middle this bit here they call a point of braiding in kamahimo and again if you try and it will naturally stay fairly in the center and it's quite a small hole here so um try and keep it fairly in the center of there it will ride uh, by the center i mean um side to side in the center there and if you, as long as you keep them in the right numbers, it will automatically try and do that anyway. What it will do from the bottom there to the top, it will ride to the top. I don't know if it's because it's got more cords here, giving it a bit more tension, but it will ride up to the top there. Um, so let it do that. Let it ride up to the top and let it go slightly. You'll see when I braid it, will slightly try and go up on the disc. Let it do that and then you can pull it down to get it back in place. So we're not pulling it right down. We're just keeping the tension to keep it down. Okay, so what we're going to do is start our repetition of braids. Now, we do sell other variations. I can't remember what kits we've got. Um, so We do sell some starter kits if we've still got them for Flat Kamehameha. I think this is one of the braid structures you get. We only put one in the, in the starter set. Um, so you will get step-by-step -step instructions. But hopefully today we'll help you to have a go with this and, and see if you fancy subscribing to our latest box and if you do subscribe and you want to subscribe and have this one as your first one you'll get this one this week and then you'll get the next box next week so you'll, you'll be in for a nice little treat just to tide you over so in my head lockdowns last until mid-april because that's when the shop can open although the kids are going back um so I'm thinking you've got two more bead boxes coming if you're a subscriber to, uh, in lockdown, in my head lockdown. <laughs> so hopefully I'll be a nice little treat to tide you all over. Okay, let's do some braiding. So what we do, they're all numbered up. So this is a, a very soft disc and it is um, got little slots in all of the sides and top and they are all numbered up. So these ones go 1 to 12 with no circles, 1 to 12 with circles. This is just this particular disc. A to D and then A to D with circles around them and that's how we refer to it so make sure if you are reading our instructions can I just bring the instructions in just quickly to show you one so take the cord from six over to B circle okay so make sure you refer to the circle and follow where that comes to on the disc um, so let, so that would be this, that, that particular instruction is the first one I need to follow which is taking it from six and taking it over to B circle over here. Then we take seven. Oh, I can find the right one. Seven over to B, plain B on the left. Now what you'll see there, I've kept everything quite symmetrical. So everything I've done on that side, if I half the board, everything I do on this half, I repeat on that half. So that would be that. And I'm keeping hold of that underneath there. Then I take the cord from six circle which is down here, up to six. Which then, in turn, goes from... Well, I'm going to do... it. Sorry, on these instructions, I do all of one side first. So six circle is up. Five comes down to five circle. No, six circle, sorry, the gap there. Then I take... So it's two moves there. Then I do the same on this side, taking seven circle up to seven and plain eight down to seven circle so that repeated what i've done on that side of the board on the left side of the board that repeated that on the right side of the board for me okay and i'm keeping hold of under there i'm keeping hold of that just there 
So then there's um, some further moves to finish this set. Now, if you ever get stuck, this is something I've been asked. Say you got to this stage and the phone did ring and you think, I have no idea where I am. Although your colour chords may be different, what you need to then do is look at where you're at on your picture. So if I looked at this picture, this step of the instructions here, I would see that I've got my chords. They might not, they're not the same colours, although I am using the same colour ways. They're not in the same places. But I've got one on B, I've got one on B circle. Up here, I've got one on four, six, seven, and nine, with gaps in the other two. And five, six, seven, eight, I've got chords on. So if I go to my disc, that mirrors, albeit in the different colours, that, that mirrors that picture. So you know you're on that step, you've done that repetition of moves. So then you're on your next instruction. So if you need to and you get out, the, can't get in the flow of it, take it steady. Go one step at a time until you're, until you're happy with it. And where you need to, refer to the instructions that we've done for you to, to cover that. So we do five circle up to five. And we take four down to five. Then we take chord eight circle up to eight. And we take nine down to eight circles. So that was doing one set of moves there, one set of moves on the other side. We've got our final set of moves, which is bringing these chords from the side up. So if I switch hands to hold on to that underneath, and if I take B up to four, and my final move, B circle up to nine. That's a full repetition. If you go back to the beginning where I started, that is there. Now the other thing that we've done is put you in a quick reference guide, okay? So the quick reference guide will show you take six across to B circle, seven, so at some point you'll get to the point where you'll be able to use the quick reference guide and that was a recommendation on the customers that I taught, at, well pre-lockdown um, and that, that's been really helpful so hopefully you'll be able to use that once you get in a flow to save you flipping your paper over and looking at in great detail all the instructions. So we're going for the basic 10 braid, one of the braids that are available, and we're not doing it as a beaded one, we're just doing it as a braided one. So that's what I want to just go back through with you. So let's start again. So we take six across to B circle, seven across to B, six circle up to six, five down to six circle. 7 circle up to 7, 8, oh, so much this, down to 7 circle, 5 circle up to 5, oh, sorry, I always forget whether it's 2 moves there, 4 down to 5 circle, repeat the opposite side, 8 circle up to 8, 9 down to 8 circle, and then take your chords from B up to four, B circle up to nine, and you're back to the beginning again. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea um, of where you're going. Shall I just do one more repetition round? Um, oh, good. Somebody's um, popped in to say that Eva, that you've, you've managed to do it. Yeah, I'm glad glad you enjoyed it. Yes, I have done other kits before, um, particularly with this braiding, actually. This is one of the original ones that I enjoyed doing. Um, and yes, the beaded ones are fabulous. So if you're not a braider with a round board, just bear in mind, normally if you come into the shop, we'd talk you through the braids. And the round braid is incredibly popular. So um, that's another variation. So if you haven't, you know, depending on what you're doing with your, um, your your flat one and if you've sort of out done everything you want to on there, you've got your, your round one to go at. So we sell plenty of kits and that's that's the topic that my Kamehimo book's on as well. So if you, uh, you know, if you want to do that, I've got my book out on the, the round braid. Do you know, I didn't have a copy of my book at home. I took it into work the other day and I was trying to, trying to remember one of the braids that I'd done. And I didn't have my book here, so I've had to grab another copy. I don't know if I brought it home. Oh, I thought I brought another copy home. I haven't even got a copy of my book here, I don't think. But um, yes, yeah, so it, it's it, that's all on round braid. So if you're not done Kamehimo at all, round braid is your next route to try, perhaps. So let's do another repetition over. Okay, we're going six. Oh, get the right one. So if you need to, tip it so you can see. I'm trying to do it so you can see it all. 
six across to B circle. Oh, I've done that with the wrong hand. Really, that might be the other tip when you're asking about tension. I would probably do that one with my right hand. I'd probably switch to holding that, I think, when I'm doing it properly and take that one across with my left hand. It probably just gives you an equal tension either side because you're doing it at the same angle. Then we take six up to six, five down to six circle, seven circle up to seven, eight down to seven circle, five circle up to five, four down to five circle, eight circle up to eight, nine down to eight circle i'm better when i'm not stopping in between i've got more of a flow on it then and then your final set of moves is b up to four b circle up to nine and then you're back to the beginning now even that little bit i've been doing let me whip this over so you can see can you see in there how's that let me bring it up here and see if we can get a focus on that view So you can start to see that braid coming through. There is a cheeky bead snuck in there from one that I was playing about with, but you can hopefully see the braid structure going around there. Okie dokie, so that's that one. So let me remind you which braid structure we were doing. We were doing this one. And a Humphrey just to get you in focus. There we go. So that is our 10 braid flat comma hemo. So either available as a sort of starter kit or in this month's speed box, which you're welcome. You can either buy, you don't have to subscribe if you just want to buy one. Um, it's a, a few pounds more, but it allows you just to wait to see what we're doing and um, pick the ones you fancy so just treat it like you were buying, treating yourself to a one-off kit but if you want to be part of the the group and that anticipation i love it of, of getting your new box um then you can subscribe so you pay an initial 60 pound which works that the box works out 20 pound a month that's delivered that's with everything that i've shown you all the extras all the techniques coming over to the the facebook club as well and being part of our exclusive group over there um, and then, yeah, if, if I need to, I'll pop in with some extra tuition and instructions if there's anything else I can teach you. But I definitely do one live in there. You also get um, first access to full Zoom classes. So they're interactive. So instead of it being me talking and, and you looking at me, um, we're all looking at each other. And they work really well. So I teach one or two a month. And Heidi, we've got Heidi on board, our other, our other tutor who does these lives for you. Um, Heidi's, Heidi's started doing Zoom, so she's got her beaded dream catcher Zoom class. So those of you that are members will be getting an email, maybe today or tomorrow, just to confirm that the class is open bookings for you guys. Um, and you'll get little offers. Oh, did I mention discount as well? So you'll also get an exclusive discount off any other things you want to purchase with us. So that's exclusive part of the bead box as well. Um, somebody's just said they hope the birthday fairy is watching <laughs> brilliant so you can subscribe anytime you can either just pick up individual boxes or you can um, you know just subscribe to three months and then it's flexible thereafter so you can either let it carry on rolling at 20 pound a month to treat yourself or you can can sort of dip in and out of it as as you wish to um, you know if you wish to unsubscribe for a while if you find yourself a bit busy but I'm hoping that one thing lockdown's taught us is to make time for ourselves and, and time to enjoy things that we love and, and we're all here in this group and on this page because we all have our, our beading don't we so this was the chevron which was the other braid um, those of you that are members can go back and watch the video but it's not one I share publicly so it's only for members pop into the bead boxes Hannah how do I get involved with zoom classes um yes yeah, so the if you're a beadbox member which i think you are hannah um so you'll be getting an email with a link to to book the classes they are fabulous can i um i don't know if i can show you what i'm doing this month dare i tease you just hold on hold that thought okay talk amongst yourselves for a minute i'm going to show you on the samples because i love it
literally still got the needle attached to it, but um, I really want to show you this. So this one's Heidi's one. I love the Dreamcatcher anyway. So this is, we've already run one of these. This was a beautiful class. So Heidi's running another Dreamcatcher class. This was brilliant. I was the student on this. I helped her with the tech. Not that I'm the expert in it now, but because I've done a few. Um, and beaded Dreamcatcher was just beautiful. Um, this one's mine. I love it. I absolutely love it. I haven't even got around to sharing this with you guys that um, were on the class. I, mean, I said I'd show you. Let me put it on the... Let me put it on here. You can see the middle of it. Just hold on. Yeah, I've literally still got my needle attached to it because I need to do my final bit on it. How gorgeous is that? So this is Heidi's exclusive lotus flower design for the centre. And she shows you all of this. Um, so it's absolutely gorgeous, that one. So that one is the, the lotus flower. So we've got beaded dreamcatcher. This is, I love this. This should look better on the white. Just hold on. So this is my new speedy spiral. This is something that one of our designers has taught a, a version of this in the past for us, but we've never had it as a kit. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. I love doing this one. Haven't done it for years and was looking back over some of the different spirals and things that I've done. And I thought, yes, speedy spiral it is. So I'm going to teach this as a class. Ah, okay, Leslie. So you're asking about starting. Um, I can probably just undo this one that I've got. Let me answer the questions about the the Zoom classes first. So, um, and then I'll come back to you on, on how to start the, the Kamehimo braid that we're doing today. Hayley, you have young children. I get that. I haven't got young, young, young children anymore, but I do get it. Um, so, yes, they will be available as a kit. Yes, Dreamcatcher, we're really hoping to do as a kit because it's so cute. So bear with me on that one. I hope that'll be in the next couple of weeks. And Speedy Spiral, yeah, I think once I've done the instructions, I think it'll be a really cute kit. Now we've got a colour preference for that that we'd like to do. I really like the blue. I don't I do not do blue very often. I suppose, I guess, would I wear the blue? I don't know if I've got clothing it would go with. But I've done it. It will probably be a bracelet kit, but... Uh, and I think it would look really nice as a necklace as well if you carried it on. And there's a few variations, so I'm just having a play about for my guys that want to come on the class with some variations as well. Um, so yes, they will. They will at some point, Haley, be available as a, a kit. Probably just a little bit after. I tend to when I've got a class, I tend to focus on that. Um, isn't the Dreamcatcher just gorgeous? Don't worry, we're not going anywhere. You can wait for your payday. And <laughs> um, if you want old boxes. Um, that's an option as well. So say you want this one as your first one, but you're not going to buy it till next month. We can manually sort that out for you. Just just let us know. Pinks and purples. Is that for the spiral, do you think, Leslie? Um, yeah. Or silver gold. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. We could literally make this kit, couldn't we, in about 10 different colours. Um, so, yeah, for the class, I'll probably send just one or two colourways out. And then, yeah, the possibilities are endless. But the, the materials used in this are quite um, simple. You can probably see there, it's bicones and two sizes of seed beads. So really, it, it's a lovely one for recreating. We have an amazing selection of, of bicones and an amazing selection of seed beads, certainly for you to come in the shop and soon to be more online as well. Okay, um, let me go back to just starting that, um, Leslie, a... Uh, starting the, the beaded kamahimo so I was distracted by sparkly things I need I forgot about those I was going to show you Heidi's going to do some wire work next Wednesday um, we always teach things like button um, I'm just going to unpick this one so bear with me I might unpick you can do if you do need to, this is a worthwhile technique to see okay so say you go completely wrong you go that just didn't work do it like you would when you've got braided hair. So imagine this is platin and you kind of just run your fingers through it to unplat your hair. And that's how it is. And then your cord's never going to waste. And I did put a bead on that, so I'm just going to slide that off. And then unplat my hair. Ready to do. Oh, somewhere there. There we go. So just get it back to the beginning. Okay, so let's just... Right, that's back to the beginning. So first off, it's measuring your cord as, as per the instructions. Tying, can you see that slightly different coloured piece there? 
that you tie in the center of your cord all pinks and purples would be good as well i know isn't it yeah so many choices with creating these kits i will have to have an experiment for sure um so i've tied that there maybe if i do a kit we could do a mixed one so it makes different you could have like three different colors of bicones and then you could make some variables oh that's sounding cute yes leave that one with me um okay so tie a little knot there let's go back to showing how to start it keep focused keep focused keep telling the kids that they're schooling tie a little knot there and then what you do is you you've got your center your way that becomes your point of braiding so once you've got that there you push that through that middle bit so it goes through and then you sort of let me push it through and then just i'm pushing it through quite a bit for now but you bring it up to the top so just the little tail end goes through so you sort of hold that there now that knot sits in the middle at first i don't think it did what i said it was going to do because i didn't do enough repetitions around but it didn't it starts to crawl up here a little bit you don't want it too far up but you can you can it does start to a little bit let it do it a little bit and then pull it down back in place but pull it down equally so but to start off with we'll set it up but because i know it rides to the top there and that's okay i probably do tend to set it up near to the top of that as well so you hold the knot or you hold it it's a nice small board actually so you, i can fit my hands quite comfortably round there and hold the knot there and then you lay it out now if you follow the instructions um it, it creates it because you want to be creating it symmetrical certainly when you're learning i feel um so if we go so we're starting with so start off on nine so if i put oh no they're coming they're, they're in the order they want yeah let's get them in there i'll put them in place so i'm going to drape them where they need to be there i'm going to put two in place for that middle bit and then i'll put them in situ okay there and then i want my other four down there okay so i've just draped them where they need to be so my first one i've put, I've put number nine in there my next one's the opposite color eight then i go back to my blue seven blue so then i mirror that so i want blue six silver five blue four so I took a mirror and halved it across you've got blue silver blue and then you've got blue silver blue like that then on the bottom i'm going silver on eight blue blue silver on five so that's how you set it up now get your tension straight this is a little bit baggy i'm going to pull on those and i'm going to pull on those and can you see that really tightened that up a little bit made it nice and taut um, get those braids nice and taut on there and just make sure that knot has gone a little bit baggy. Make sure it stays tight um, in the middle. You don't have to use a bit of satin cord. It's actually sometimes a bit better with a different piece of cord. Makes it tighter. So that's your starting point. And then you go on the flow of the instructions that I showed you. I hope that helps um, answer that for you. Okay, let me flick my camera back on. I hope wrong one. Get the right camera. Okie dokie. So thank you so much everybody. It's been lovely to uh, to be here with you again. It seems like a long time. I haven't normally I teach a Zoom class in in this time as well and I just haven't so this is the first time I've been back on camera. Um d d doing my live. So I'm definitely back in 2 weeks and actually by then I think it will be Beadbox 5 Reveal, where I don't show too much. Um, I just show you what's in the box, the yummies, um, what you're making. I don't do a sort of tutorial on it. I don't always do one. The only reason I decided to is because this is one I've done on telly before, so people will have seen it. I just thought it'd be nice to show it. So I may or may not do bits out of the box, but the main full tutorial, and the only way you, you sort of be part of that, and I want to keep that exclusive to, to people that are supporting us with the box, um, is over in the Riverside Bead Box subscription um, group, the private group that we've got. So I do like to keep that just for there, but I may show snippets of things on this group as well. So I'm back in two weeks showing the reveal for Bead Box 5. Heidi's back next week with wire work. So it's gonna be, she's gonna make a little button ring and a little button, it was a pendant. It's, it's sort of like almost a butterfly wing on there as well but i'm sure she'll show you other tips and tricks with your wire too so 
back to wire which we haven't covered for a while next week then i'll be um bead box i'm also on telly that's next week i'm on telly wednesday so when heidi's here with you guys um in the evening i am there in um the morning i'm at tv on the morning at nine o'clock i will just say about the bead box it's a secret <laughs> sneaky peeks are good yes um someone just said sneaky peeks are good we do we did a survey right at the beginning and for now unless people change their mind in their droves it was do you want us to tell you what it is so you can choose whether to buy it so you can you know choose whether you want your subscription or do you want a surprise and i think we just all decided a surprise is really nice so we decided that was the way forward so we'll call it a surprise box um what can i tell you about next times um let me give you the style of what it is so next time is back to jewelry and it's not a technique like this so it's not kamahimo makami or anything like that it is a style of um a style yes yeah, jewelry jewelry i don't want to tell you too much i want it's very exciting i like this project a lot it's a colorway it's not teal don't be thinking it's teal which is one of my favorite colors but it is a really beautiful elegant colorway it's a project that will be um easy to create in lots of colorways as well so lots of different variations of the project as are most as long as we've got the bead choice for you you can recreate it can't you and whatever you fancy um, I love the surprise of you guys getting a surprise as well. So I am super excited. I cannot believe it must be four weeks, obviously, probably probably just a bit less. It depends what day in the week we send it out. And this one, I'm not don't want to promise you, bear with me, but roughly we are aiming for Monday, especially with me being on the telly Wednesday. So Monday into Tuesday. I'm trying to send them all out, out on the same day. Um, so we don't have, you know, I like you all to get them get them the same time really but I do know there's always delays getting post and stuff but they do generally as long as you've ordered them and you're in the system before they're ready so we'll print the orders say Sunday as long as they're all in there before then you will get them on the first day and then you can quite happily order it like today if you want today that's fine you can back order that's fine just buy them as a one-off or start your subscription once I've done the reveal so you can start subscribing from today and have this box well thank you guys i have more to say about that than i thought i thought it'd only be a quick demo on that one so uh, thank you so much for sticking with me it's been really nice to be here with you um sorry i've missed a question is it um about a meter cord i would go with that i do find it's a little bit less personally um but yeah start with a meter um split into two yes i Yes, yeah, so I, I tie mine in the middle. The other way you can do it is do shorter lengths of um, the cord and tie a big knot at the end, which some people like to do for their Kamahimo. So, yeah, but it wouldn't be a metre then. Absolutely not be a metre. It would be more like 60 centimetres or something. Um, so, yeah, that, that is an option. But, yes, generally it's that. Have I missed anything else? Um, thank you for being with me guys and to those of you that are watching it back thanks for popping back by and uh, I I've got a zoom class I think as well within that time but if you're a beadbox member watch out and I'll probably just send you a very quick email that just says about beadbox uh, about classes and then we'll we'll get them out there for everybody else to see soon so yeah I've got got my classes coming up over the coming weeks too so thank you guys good to see you can't wait to see you back in the shop but uh, still seven weeks so we're going to keep going try not to focus on that too much for now it keeps us going to to do these with you so thanks take care everybody bye bye